The following is an excerpt from the novel Promo Cowboy by Barry Fitzsimmons, read by the author. Chapter 9 I scoot east to the avenue, 9th Avenue, and make my regular right turn for Eddie's place. Then I stop, on account of I ain't got enough cash to cover what I owe, not near enough. And old Tom ain't gonna want to serve me lest I pay up. Of course, maybe he ain't there and his wife's holding down the fort, or that daughter they got, the one that talks with an Irish accent, even though her folks don't. I think, hmm, maybe it ain't the ethical thing. Only I head north for them uptown establishments I don't never patronize, not lest somebody else is picking up the tab. Ten blocks up I go, like I'm trying to put distance between me and old Tom, and I end up at a tavern called Ad Mixture. Promo legend tells it how, years ago, some expats from our trade bolted the business and bought this place, hence the name and the crowd they cater to. Another promo legend tells it how Admixture's the very saloon where a certain Christmas party took place, and supposedly old promo cowboy knocked Willie Schubermiller cold. Long time ago, that was. Admixture's got a velvet curtain I've got to push aside to get in, and it leads to a long tavern laid out a lot like Eddie's, only instead of a wall on the right, they got a big dining room, plus better lighting and no sawdust on the floors, and no soft spots that give under old cowboy's boot. That bar on the left stretches from near the door to the back of the room, and a good crowd's gathered up front, about three deep they are. Being tall like I am, I can see how it thins toward the back, so I start to snake past them pretty young people. Men in fresh pressed shirts, women with pearls and neat haircuts, all sipping green bottle beers and high stemmed cocktails, chattering away, having the time of their lives I reckon. They got their backs to me, mostly, and seem awful excited about some action near the corner behind that bar. Standing on their toes they are, falling over one another, tongues a wagging. Some god awful ghetto rap music's playing, real loud it is. Can't make out the words on account of the vocalist is talking so fast. Only when it comes round to the chorus, I recognize how it's old DJ Duvetine Scraps, one of his singles from a few years back. Can't help it but shake my head on account of Scraps used to one time be a jingle writer here in town. Worked with him once or twice, back when he was a musical boy genius and didn't know the word no. Got his start at LTV, Scraps did, in promos no less. Only I heard tell how his head got too big for his you know. And once he broke out, he turned his back on New York and all his friends. Of course, nowadays, you don't hear Scraps music all that much, or even his name. Wonder if it's all downhill for him now. Anyhow, I find a spot near the end of that bar and belly up, and I lean over a bit to hail that barkeep, who it turns out's over with that lively crowd up front and a woman to boot. From where I'm standing, all I can see is the skin on her backside, and it looks like there ain't but maybe a napkin covering her front, with a few strings and some long dark hair dangling, all loose like over the part that's facing me plus some real tight jeans that surely make the most of God's gifts. Whatever that barmaid's selling at the other end, drinks is only part of it. She's got her arms out, shaking what she's got up top, while them fellas throw money down on that bar and yell for more. Sure enough, she does a little 360 for him, a rehearsed-like move, showing off the rest of that ripe tomato body. More money gets thrown down on that bar, and I start to wonder if admixture's where I want to break this bill. I mean, shoot, I'm enjoying the show, only it ain't what I come for, and there's plenty other fellas between me and that barmaid, all leaning out, flashing bills and waving like children. Fools. Me, I sort of look away, on account of when I catch sight of her face, it's like I can't take it. Some women are too darn lovely to look at for too long without making a fella feel like he's throwing gas on a fire. She makes her way all slow and languid down that bar, likely so me and all them other men can appreciate her form, and I surely do, only I don't intend on paying for the privilege. Fact, I figure I'll duck on out of admixture, head to the next saloon down the line, only now that barmaid passes by all them other fellas till she stops right front of yours truly. She don't make a smile or look in my eyes. Instead, she sort of looks at the air all around me, something I ain't never seen a woman do. Nice hat, she says over that music. 
Thanks, I say, finger in my brim. Take a bud, please. Don't serve it, she says, impatient-like. I look away. About a miller. Miller? That barmaid makes a laugh and swipes a lock of dark hair that hangs all sexy-like over her eyes. Then she spreads them long, beautiful arms out on that bar and leans into me, sort of looking down. We've got Coors Light, Sam Adams, and Rolling Rock. All the rest is imported. I lean in myself. Talk like you know me, I say, on account of, as a rule, I don't buy no imported beer. I do know you. She looks up in my eyes, and them beautiful blue things show me how she's got more going on, deep down, that is, than any ten women in the place. That Times Square video party, a few years back, you decked that guy who messed with your hat. She makes a little smile. I know that guy. You was there? I was here. It's my place. Willie should have known better. Never mess with a man's hat. Deed, I say, and I can't help it but make a smile. So what'll it be? Of course, I'm plain undone. I look at her some more, and she looks back like she's willing to wait, only not forever. So I think it over, quick like. Won't buy no Coors on account of its non-union beer. Sam Adams tastes all right in a glass, but it's too dark to drink out the bottle, and that's the way I prefer it right now. Rolling Rock's so thin it goes down like water, only I make a nod. Take a rock, please. She turns to one of them industrial ice boxes where a world of cold beer awaits thirsty lips. Then she pops that top and throws it down right front of me. No glass, right? She says like she knows me all right. I make a head shake and throw down that still wet Jackson, only she holds up a hand, palm out, like a traffic cop. On me. Sorry about the Budweiser thing. I'll see if we can stock it, so you'll come back. For a beat, she carries my glance, not playing at me or making faces or doing some hoochie coo, just looking woman to man. Then she starts back down that bar, making drinks for all them other men who've been waiting since before I got here. I watch her work a while, then mostly I look down, feeling like I've been touched deep inside. Must be a good five minutes before I realize my hand's cold on account of it's holding on to a beer and I still ain't took one drink off it.